We all know when it comes to making brand new ads, we've got either those net new creatives, so think those big, crazy ideas, things we haven't tested before, or we have iteration opportunities, which is more so that low hanging fruit where we are seeing performance, things working within ads, and we're going to take those bits that are working and the bits that aren't working, seeing if we can change those out to make more winners or take learnings from those. What we are going to hone in on and focus today is finding that low hanging fruit and diving into finding iteration opportunities within Motion because we make it really, really quick and really easy. I'd recommend having your Motion account open. Feel free to follow along, pause as we go, but you'll definitely want to be creating these reports within your account too. So first thing I'm going to do is click create report and I'm going to select a top performing report first. I'm going to head over to card view because I like seeing the visuals first and forefront. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of different metrics. Feel free to clear out whatever was automatically added in there. So the first metric I'm going to load in here is spend. I want to make sure our assets are scaling. We don't want to be looking at ads that haven't scaled enough. It's just not ready to take learnings from. So we want to make sure we're seeing ones that are scaling first and forefront. Second thing you're going to load in here is your goal metric. So if you are purchase focused, that would be ROAS most likely or CPA. But if you are any other type of goal, such as app installs, leads, whatever it might be, feel free to load that in. So cost per app install or whatever that could be. Could also be a custom event. Just know you can also pull those into motion if you have custom conversions or events, but feel free to load that in as your second metric. From there, we are going to load in our motion metrics, which are these little purple ones here. You can either type in motion and it'll pull all four of them up, um, or you can just search for those purple icons. But we are going to pull up hook score, watch score, click score, and we'll do convert score like that. One thing to keep in mind is that convert score is just for purchase. So if you are a client that is lead focused or app install focused or one of those other variation of options, you won't want to use convert score. Just something to keep in mind. I will show you how to tailor this report a little bit further in those cases, but we'll just start with the basics to begin with. Next thing we're going to want to do here is throw on any additional filters that make sense to parse ads out by. For example, if we are looking at whatever kind of strategy you are running, maybe we just want to dive into ads that are part of our prospecting campaign, or maybe we're just diving into ads that are part of a creative testing campaign. Feel free to throw on those additional filters. I will put this one in here. Let's pull in just anything as part of prospecting as an example, and then we've got that added and good to go. Now we can start analyzing these ads and pulling out some insights to figure out what we want to do next. So like you'll see, motion metrics will give you a color score. You'll either have red, yellow, or green. It'll give you a number between zero to 100. And what this will help you do is directionally figure out what is happening within the asset. So think of your first two metrics, if it's scaling and if it's returning back for you as those harder metrics, like is this ad working or not based on our objective versus these additional motion metrics are more so painting a picture and telling a story of why or why not it's working. And we're comparing to other ads of yours, which is really nice. So we can start to see comparatively within this ad, this one's doing a really great job capturing attention. So whatever we have within those first three seconds is hooking people in, it's capturing attention really, really well. Where we're not doing as good, of, as good of a job here would be driving clicks out. So we maybe don't have a strong CTA. It's like interesting content, but it's just not calling people out to really explore it on the website or to download the app or whatever it might be. So that's where we're saying those storytelling metrics to say like why something is or is not working. One other last thing you'll notice within these motion metrics is that sometimes you'll see little dashes for hook and watch. That is totally normal and expected because with images, for example, we can't pull that. So you can't see if people are staying to watch three seconds or continuing to watch longer. So for any of those static images, you won't get the hook and watch, but you will still get click and convert, which is plenty to still pull some information on on how to improve that iteration. So with these storytelling metrics, you're probably wondering, okay, what do we do from here? What learnings can we take and how can we then go ahead and create iterations? What you essentially want to be looking at here is, like I said, finding opportunities to have a quick win. In this case, like this example we were looking at, I'd probably open up, watch this video, watch it to see what's happening within the hook. What is happening within those first three seconds? Is it a certain type of messaging we are leaning into? Is it a certain talent we're showing? Or maybe, for example, a certain style of visual that maybe is doing a really good job capturing attention. I'd also watch this asset to see within it, 
do we have a strong CTA in it at all? Or is it like all the way at the end of the video and people just aren't getting to the end to the point where we are calling them out to the website or to download the app or to fill out the lead form as an example. So start to pull that creative bit in when we start analyzing what is happening within this asset. Now, hopefully you guys also have much more engaging content. This is our demo account, so the videos in here aren't the best for demonstration, (laughs) but hopefully you guys have some more things you can pull out as you watch your video content. Now, this view is great. It's going to give you that higher level overview, but we do have some pre-built folders, which we can load into your account if you want. Feel free to just reach out here in the chat bubble if you want access to these. But these are our iteration and inspiration folders. Also, our demo account is pretty messy. Hopefully yours doesn't look like this, but wanted to give you guys a quick glance at these different folders. So what we can start to do is actually use these motion metrics to filter in ads that are meeting certain criteria and have an opportunity for an iteration. So if we look at iterations needed as an example, it would filter by all of those stages. So ads that aren't capturing attention very well, ads that aren't holding attention very well, ads that aren't driving clicks very well, and maybe ads that just aren't converting really well, but we are driving clicks out. So let's head over to iterate on hook for our first example. Iterate on hook, how this one is filtered is it's looking at ads that have a hook score below 70. So if we're looking at that rating system from 0 to 100, the hook is a little bit lower. It's not quite within that green. It's going to be in that yellow shade. So anything below 70, but it is converting for us. So it is technically working. These would be the ads we have the biggest opportunity to just iterate on the hook because we know in general, when we get people in, they are converting. So it is the right audience. Messaging and ethos of the ad is probably working exactly as we expected. We just want to capture a little bit more attention and get people staying to watch the content and click out. So these would be all the ones pulling in automatically for ads where we could iterate on the hook. So again, I'd start watching all of these assets, see if I notice anything visually or messaging wise within these hooks. Do I notice any themes? Oh, if so, maybe we don't lean this direction because we notice that we continually are not capturing attention quite as well. So that's one thing you can pull from this. Now, for those of you who are not purchase focused, and like I mentioned, convert score isn't going to work too well for you. Definitely ways we can customize this. So let's take a look at, as the example, maybe a cost per app install focused client. What I can do instead is load in cost per app install. And let's just see like generally, maybe anything below $5 is a good cost per app install for us. Instead of having that convert score as a filter, I would pull a performance metric filter and do cost per app install. Just make sure you search for the one you want. And I would say is in between 0.1 and $5. Now you'll notice I didn't select the one as cost is below a certain amount. We want to also make sure we're hiding out any $0 ones. So that's why I usually do is that in between. So that way we get that zero um, taken out. But with that, now I can see ones that are technically not capturing attention for us, but generally these apps or these ads, sorry, are working. They are converting based on our goal. And again, these would be the ones that we could make that quick iteration opportunity on. Aside from that, let's head over to the inspiration folder. This is where we're going to figure out what to change it to. So if we did want to, for example, adjust the hook on those assets, we could figure out what kind of hooks are working. So let's go into that example here. So similar type of approach here. We're just going to have the motion metric, but flopped the other way. So instead of it being not capturing attention well, we want to say, but it is capturing attention well. So hook score is above 70. We might also want to load in an additional metric like ROAS as an example, or cost per app install or CPA, whatever it might be, just to validate again that it is generally working for us. We don't want to have, for example, something that has a great hook and it just captures attention because it's really shocking, but the people that we do get in aren't converting. It's the complete wrong audience. So that's why you want to have a little bit of extra validation here just to see the ones that we are capturing attention really well on, are they actually working for us? So that's the first thing. Second thing you might want to throw on here is something like a spend filter. So that would just be 
again, coming here, performance metrics, selecting something like this and saying anything that's spent above 100 or above 1,000 or 500 or whatever that benchmark would be. Again, just to make sure we're looking at ads that we can pull meaningful learnings from and not something that has just spent just a little bit, but we captured enough people's attention that it's got an incredible hook score already. Um, you'll just want to throw something like that on. So same thing I would do here, just essentially open up any one of these assets, go ahead and play the videos, try and figure out what's going on within these video assets that is capturing attention well, draw some inspiration from it, and then now you've got your idea of what we want to change within the hook of the ones that weren't working too well, and we can then make an iteration and hope that that one performs better. Now, in terms of sharing and saving those insights and passing it on to possibly teammates or agencies to make that content or creators to make that content, I'll show you a really quick and easy way to do it. So let's head back over to Iterate on Hook and let's go ahead and I'm going to unselect all of these. Let's just say this top asset here is the one I want to lean into making an iteration on. Go ahead and select the one or a couple that you want to iterate on and click this share report option up in the top right. This is going to generate a shareable link that you can send to anybody, which is great. So whether or not they are in your Emotion account, they are still going to have playable assets that they can click on. So then I might add a message similar to this mentioning what we want to change within the asset, what we want to lean into for that new hook. Go ahead and copy that link. And then it's going to look like this where we've got the video that we can then click open, you'll be able to play the asset to see what's going on within it. They'll also have your comments up here in the top. And then you can also tag if they are a teammate within your account, you can go ahead and add additional comments here. So as an example, maybe we have a video editor on the team who's going to be making those changes. They could tag their teammate. I could say, at Miguel, can you make these changes? And they can comment back as well too, letting us know it was finished. So a really great way of communicating back and forth with different projects that we want to work on, sharing that feedback, and also making sure they get notified um, of those changes. So one thing you can do to dive even deeper into the video asset is use our creative insights. So if you didn't just want to use motion metrics, you can select this option here and you'll get a little bit of a deeper insight into the creative itself. So you can either look at audience retention or drop off. So drop off is going to show you if you have like a big spike at a certain period of time, we might say between zero and say 15 seconds, that's where we see our biggest spike at about that point. So then we could say, okay, we've lost people by this point in the video. Do they even get to the most important messaging after that? Or are most people gone by then? So video analysis is going to let you dive in a little bit deeper to where we're seeing drop off. Placement breakdown is going to show you where this asset ended up. This can be interesting too. For example, if we notice that maybe Facebook feed is where it ended up more than our stories. Was this asset created for feed or was it more so created for stories but then turned into a feed or vice versa? And you can always check what those different assets look like by selecting this here and just toggling between the different previews so you can see what does this creative look like in say stories or feed, depending on where it was um, mostly sent to. And then next you're gonna have gender and age breakdown. It can still be very interesting to see which creatives work based on different genders and different ages. Did we expect that? If we do have a little bit of a variety of an audience, did we expect that this kind of creative would work with this gender or and or age, or is that totally unexpected and it's a very interesting learning we can take from there. So Creative Insights is just gonna let you dive in a little bit deeper and possibly pull a little bit more inspiration on what kind of content we wanna iterate on or just take learnings from in general. So that is a quick run through of how we can start to pull iteration opportunities, how you can find ads that aren't quite working or are almost there and we can make that quick iteration on, or finding ads that are working really well that we can draw inspiration from to make changes to those ones that are almost, almost there. Like I mentioned, if you want to get those folders, so both this iteration needed and the inspiration folder, just reach out to the chat in the bottom right corner. Our support team would be more than happy to load those templates in. They're going to be pre-filtered for those motion metrics. And like I said, just make a little bit of adjustment anytime you see a convert score. Just swap to cost per whatever your metric is and swap this one here. And then that should be pre-built and ready to go. But hope you guys enjoyed and ping us with any questions as you begin exploring a little bit more.